All right, so the Suns are trading Cameron Payne to the Spurs along with a second round pick and cash considerations in exchange for a second round pick back. All right, first I want to talk about the Spurs and campaign and what does that mean for the Spurs? How does he fit with the team and everything he does? And I also want to talk about the expiring contracts that they have. But yeah, first off, campaign, good role player get off the bench has had his moments in the playoffs where he's just been scoring out of his mind I mean the dude scored like 54 points I'm pretty sure in like a men's league or something but I mean yeah he's just a good role player I mean he scored like 10 points a game on like decent efficiency 36 37% from three I'm pretty sure but yeah, I mean, there's not much else to say about him. As far as, like, a locker room guy, he's been pretty good. I mean, you see him, all those dancing videos with Russ and the Suns and him hyping everybody up. Like, you know, he, he'll be good. Like, with, I've seen some tweets on Twitter saying, like, him and Jeremy Sohan are going to talk a lot of shit. They probably will. <laughs> but, yeah, it's... Him and the rest of the team is going to be fun because everybody on the team is young and they all got personalities and loves to talk shit and all that stuff. But yeah, it's it'll be fun. But as far as like where he fits, it's going to be a little weird because you have Devontae Graham there and they're kind of both the same type of player. Like they're both like short undersized shooter shooters who don't play that good of defense but they're good offensive players so either Devonte graham doesn't play or campaign plays or or campaign doesn't play campaign is probably gonna want to play because he's on a expiring contract he's gonna want to make his money and he's gonna want to prove himself so i think with that aspect he could be a really good backup point guard for us and he might do his best as a backup point guard in in his career just because he wants to get paid and you see this all the time like players that and their expiring deal like you see you saw that with christian wood fred van bleet yada 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 where they they outperform their contract or they outperform their actual value that they bring so I think that he could be one of those one of those players that just locks in for the whole season and gets paid. And as far as Devontae Graham, I do think like he'll play here and there, but not definitely not as much as he did with us last season. And you know, I, but he does bring a lot of good depth for the Spurs. Campaign only did play like 42 games last season. Something like that. He played in the 40s, which is like around half a season of course so if he's going to be injured then you want Devontae Graham there you still have Blake Wesley there so uh, he just adds good depth that the Spurs need and I think both can stay both can work out with together so but yeah he'll be really good off the bench along with Malachi Branham and Charles Bassey and whoever we put at the forward spots Julian Champagny is probably going to play and I don't know, Seti Osman will play, maybe, who knows. But that's something we'll have to wait and see. But yeah, I mean as far as expiring contracts go, Spurs have acquired twenty-five million dollars in expiring contracts this offseason alone. And we we have a total of sixty one million dollars in expiring contracts this season as well. So that gives us, I'm pretty sure next season we only have like $45 million on payroll. <laughs> or not 45. We have a very low payroll next season. So, the Spurs have to do something. <laughs> the Spurs are going to have to spend money for once. They're going to have to trade for somebody. They're going to have to do something. But the first couple things I think they're going to be doing is they're going to extend Evan Vassell. That's a given. He's been a good player for us. The dude's like a Chris Middleton in the making and I think he can be a little bit better than him because 
he's a little more athletic and they both have a very similar play style and they both have really good mid-range pull-ups so yeah he's probably gonna get around 25 mil a year I wouldn't be surprised if he gets more than that just because of the players I've seen in his draft class the type of extensions they got I mean who knows he, they might extend him right now <laughs> I mean it could happen today tomorrow next season who knows he's gonna be a restricted free agent next season and I they probably want to avoid that because teams are gonna want to give him a lot of money if he does enter restricted free agents restricted free agency which actually I don't think they mind if that happens because if somebody tries to sign him for a lot of money they can just match it just because they have the money and they're probably willing to spend it so I wouldn't be surprised if they give him an overpriced contract I wouldn't be surprised if he signs for like 25 20 million because they signed Keldon Johnson for like 20 million this season or last season so I think that's the first thing they're going to be doing the second thing is uh, re-signing killed or not killed re-signing Zach Collins because they like him a lot Greg Popovich has said that he's like the starting center for the future that he just does all the little things right and then he can he's a really good pick and pop guy pick and roll guy set screens well plays hard plays decent defense not as good as Yaka Pirtle but he plays decent the only thing is his foul troubles but that's about it so yeah um, they gotta make moves, man. As far as like next off season goes and free agency, I don't know what the player options look like next season. That's something I would have to do research on, or look more in depth on. But the only like two players that like are notable is Jalen Brown if he doesn't resign or ex extend, get gets extended by the Celtics, and then. Pascal Siakam if he doesn't get extended by the Raptors or traded by the Raptors so I think that's just something we'll have to wait and see as far as free agency goes trading wise they have a lot of assets they could use to trade for somebody good they have a bunch of first round picks a bunch of second round picks a bunch of money and they have I want to say they want to trade anybody right now or trade any of their young players that they would want to trade like Blake was he right now because he's only in his second season but he could be traded well like at Branham they definitely don't want to trade just because he showed a lot of upside his first season Jeremy Sohan absolutely not but yeah I mean they got they got good stuff going on there so as far as like who I personally want I want I want them to personally try to trade for Darius Garland. I know he's not like the two-way point guard that everybody wants, like as a spur, but he is one of the best offensive point guards in my opinion in the league. Like, I'm not saying he's like a top. He is a top ten point guard. But I'm not saying he's top five. I am saying though that the dude is an all-star caliber point guard and raises our ceiling so much and he's perfect because he's so young and can help develop you know the whole team and can help develop with the team so that's like the main guy I want for the Spurs to trade for and I know it's kind of like out of the blue but like they I've, I've heard rumors on Twitter that they have been looking around uh, to see what his value is on the trade market, the Cavs. So, I'm not sure if he's available. I doubt he is right now. But if they don't do anything in the playoffs or Darius Garland doesn't like prove to be useful in the playoffs, like as good as he is in the in the regular season, if he doesn't translate that in the playoffs, then they're probably gonna look to move off of him. But. I mean, that's something we'll have to wait and see. I don't know how smart the Cavs are to just move off of him so quick, but like after they just developed him into an all-star player, but we'll see. Um, but yeah. As far as the Suns go, 
they've been making a lot of good moves. Oh, elbow just popped. As far as the Suns go, they they've been making a lot of good moves. Um, obviously they just got a second round pick, and the moves they've been making recently just is just a regain draft capital. Draft capital. They've been um, I know they got four first round picks back and pick swaps and. They got six second round picks recently back as well, so they've been making moves. And then all the offseason free agency signings they've got, all of them have been pretty quality signings so far. And I think they're probably going to be the second best team in the West. The Nuggets are still going to be the best. I know they lost Bruce Brown, but I don't think he's that big of a loss. And they have good enough role players that. To find someone to replace him. I mean, maybe Christian Braun will replace him. Who knows? I mean, Christian Braun did pretty well in the playoffs. He had his moments in the playoffs where he's just playing really good defense and moving in transition. So, yeah, I mean, the Suns are probably going to be the second seed. Then the rest of the West will fall in. I don't know how much I trust the Grizzlies. I don't know how much I trust the, uh, the Kings. Um, I don't know. That's something we'll have to wait and see. I will say, random prediction. Thunder are going to be a really good team next season. I'm not a Thunder Thunder fan. They, they're just adding Chet and everybody else is developing. And they have a bunch of good young role players. Along with Shea. Along with Jalen Williams. Along with Josh Giddy And all of the good young players. And they have a bunch of first round picks in the next 10 years or whatever. So they're gonna be like a top five seed, probably, maybe. I think so. That may be a little bit too big of a hot take, but they're gonna be good. I will say that. They're probably gonna make the playoffs. But yeah, um, not much else to say about that. But other than, other than watch out for the Spurs next season to make moves and campaign to the Spurs is a good move for the Spurs who brings death to the team. As far as the Suns go, they're adding draft capital and they've been making good moves this offseason. If they don't win the championship, it's a bust. The, the team's a bust. Like If they don't win the championship, everything they've traded away, everything they gave up is going to be... It's going to be tougher than to come back from that. They're just going to suck for the rest of the time there. Which, I know they... I don't, I don't remember if... Well, Bradley Beal, obviously, is still on a contract. For, what, two years, I think? I don't know. i have to look that up again. Devin Booker, obviously, signed a big contract recently as well. Or, like, a year ago. Something like, something like that. KD, I would have to look into his contract situation. I think all their main guys are locked up pretty well and then DeAndre Ayton was a restricted free agent last season and got paid and he's getting paid a lot of money too so it's just that all this money they're spending if they don't win a championship in the next two years three years and they're screwed because <laughs> they don't have that many first round picks anymore I know that said they got like fourth back but all the stuff they traded away it's going to be tough to rebuild off of that but yeah Suns, hope you all won the championship. Just because if you all don't, Twitter's going to be crazy. And then Spurs, I'm just excited to see them making moves. I'm excited to see them just just see what they're going to do, uh, especially next season. But yeah, that's about it. See you.